So if you go online, <clears throat> you're going to see that there's more cases than I actually up have on here. I've actually trimmed it a little bit to try and fit within the time that we have and to get us closer to doing the hands-on where so we have more time to analyze um, cases in the lab. Uh, is that not showing up? Oh, there we go. Perfect. So we're going to talk about left atrial appendage cases. And uh, before we start, just a brief review. Uh, the left atrial appendage is the most common site for thrombus, okay, and that's why we actually <laughs> care about it a lot. Anatomically, it's attached to the left, uh, the left inferior <coughs> portion of the left atrium, and it consists of pectinate muscles. And there are four types of L left atrial appendage morphologies that you can, we commonly see. Um, here's the pictures. These are actually from CT images because those are the best it ways, to, uh, one of the best ways to actually look at the left atrial uh, appendage. So the windsock, <clears throat> I think we see a lot, and then there's the cactus appearance over there, the chicken wing, and the cauliflower appearance. And so when you're looking at a atrial appendage, you want to make sure that you're getting through the entire appendage and you're not missing parts or lobes or sublobes of the appendage. So this is where I think there aren't going to be a lot of pretty 3D pictures on this. What there are going to, what there is going to be in this part of the talk is there's going to be a lot of biplane <coughs> imaging because how you can actually look through the valve and make sure you're not missing anything as you sweep through the valve, when you, or not the valve, <laughs> uh, as you sweep through the appendage and how you can make sure you capture all the lobes and you see the entire portion of the lobes. Because if you look at the um, chicken wing, you have a portion that always folds back versus if you're looking at the windsock. The windsock's the easiest one to assess because it's one big pocket. The chicken wing bends back. You've got to make sure you see that. Or if you've got the cactus or a cauliflower, you've got multiple arms. You've got to make sure that you see all these arms and you're not missing part of it. It's very easy to clear one part of the, but you may not realize that there's another portion that you've not seen. And this is where biplane and multiplane um, uh, imaging actually helps. So, so this is a case of a 70-year-old gentleman who presents with uh, permanent atrial fibrillation, <coughs> which means that uh, we've given up on trying to get him back to normal rhythm. Um, he had a variceal bleed, so he can't have oral anticoagulation, so he's now being worked up for left atrial appendage closure by device. So one of the things we have to do before we go for the device is we have to make sure that, that there is no clot in the left atrial appendage, and then we also have to assess for the size. Now. Um, there are some, a some couple of nice papers showing that you should try and make sure these people are a little bit fluid loaded so that way you get the appendage a little bit larger than, it should, um, than you would normally see in someone who's dry because you want to make sure you get the most accurate sizing for the device. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that we measure the appendage um, for the for the uh, for the ca in the cath lab. Uh, we do 2D planar measurements in two different views, and we actually measure right at the orifice as well as a centimeter in um, to where the landing zone will be. We do it both on 2D imaging, and then we also get a 3D data set, and we do the same thing on 3D. And in, in 3D, a lot of the times you realize when you go in and you align your plane, so there's the 3D volume. And we've got two different perpendicular planes where we're lined up at the orifice. And you can see that it's a nice oval orifice, and that's how we can get a nice measurement uh, for the uh, cath lab there. And so this is what we do for 3D. And then the other way you can actually assess the left atrial appendage sometimes, if you have a very nice clean picture, is that you can take the eye slice, which I think Annette showed an example for the mitral valve, but you can do it for the left atrial appendage too. And when you take your 3D data set and you put your slices all the way down, going uh, sort of parallel to the orifice, and you can then get slices going all the way down into your, um, into your um, left atrial appendage, and you can actually get a true nice measurement from there. The other thing is you can rotate it um, so that you're going parallel to the length of the appendage, and then you can actually look through the entire appendage for, um, for any clots or anything else like that. So that those are kind of two different ways you could approach using eye slice to take a look at the left atrial appendage. And so this is the one of the few 3D, true 3D volume rendered images I have showing that we actually put a device in, and you see the nice figure eight shape of that uh, occluder in the left atrial appendage after the device is closed. But going back to the most common question that we have is clot or no clot. So in this case, um, this is just mostly to show you that we see this a lot. Sometimes you get this haziness that you can't clear. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can actually see the little tips of the, um, of the appendage here. And so sometimes what we do, and a lot of the times, is we'll take our, our multiplane mode, the X-plane mode, and we'll actually sweep through and we'll go through what we think is the tip and what we don't think is the tip. And as you see here, this line is your plane. And then on your biplane image, what you have to realize is this is straight down the middle 
of that, okay? So the middle is where your line is, and then everything else is on either side of that, okay? And when you look at it, you can actually see there's a little tip here. So we're not seeing the full, um, in this plane, you realize that there is another little um, portion of the appendage that you don't actually really appreciate in this plane. This is where there's the value. Um, some, some people believe in doing sweeps. They sweep through, but this is a way of sweeping where you hold your image, and then you just use the biplane to sweep through your image, okay? We do uh, do this measurement where we Doppler in to look at velocities. I'm not sure anyone's ever made a clinical decision based on the Dopplers, but we find it reassuring if it's greater than 40. If it's less than that, then we kind of have a higher uh, suspicion there. Um, and then some people believe in doing the M mode, but uh, and that's what I have in there. Um, contrast, I know this is outside the 3D. Um, if we have a suspicion and we can't clear it, we do contrast. What you want to do, though, is you want to bring your mechanical index down. The second thing is you want to look at your left atrial appendage as the contrast comes swirling in. If you have a small thrombus, if the left atrial appendage gets filled, it's going to surround the thrombus. You're not, thrombus, you're not going to see it. So you want to look as it comes swirling in. And then the second thing is you want to switch into different views, okay, as you want to do that. So this patient, um, I'm just going to say, had no thrombus. And uh, that's uh, after all of that, we cleared it from there. So if you can't see anything, then you use your different techniques to try and visualize it and make sure that you're miss not missing a thrombus there. Um, so here, does anyone, so this is uh, real life imaging. And so here you see there's a nice long shadow going here, making it tough to see the appendage. We switch to another view to actually see, and then we see something flickering over here. Do you see that? Stare at it for a while. Is that real? Is that not real? <coughs> what are we going to say? It's a very unusual place. It's near the uh, opening of the valve. Does everyone see what I'm looking at? If you don't, wave, raise your hands. It's OK. OK. So we thought we saw something there. So what we do is we biplane. So we use biplane to confirm uh, what we're seeing. It gives you another plane. Sometimes we rotate into that plane to see it. And this is actually <coughs> called, there's a little bit of um, a little bit of a mobile uh, density. It's independently mobile. It's moving separately <coughs> from everything else. It's not in a traditional place, um, but uh, we actually call that as thrombus. Now let's look at this one over here. So this one, no clear smoke in the left atrium, but then we see that there's something sitting here. It's hazy. It's not quite clean. And then on the other image, we angulate through. We increase our angle as we rotate through the left atrial appendage. We still see it. It's not quite clear. We can't seem to get that very clean um, appendage that we actually like to see. So we biplane through it. And what you can see then is when you biplane, you can actually appreciate what's going on with the anatomy. There's the wall of the appendage is actually over here. We have a little bit of space behind it. And you can see that um, we're not, we're cutting into the wall here. And so it gives you some better visualization. And it gives you a better idea of what the anatomy uh, is sometimes with this biplane image mm -hmm. of these, okay? And so here, now we've gone to a different portion. This is the same patient. We've gone to a different portion, and now we see that there's a little bit of a haziness. And do you see the little smoke? And then we cut through here. And you can actually see there's a little bit of pooling here. There's actually a small thrombus over there, but we're in a different part of the appendage on this patient. So sometimes you go through, and as you go through, you realize you're into a different part of the appendage, and that's where you're going to find some surprises sometimes. Mm -hmm. So here you can see that there's a little bit of haziness, and it's sitting there, and there's a little bit of pooling with some clot there. All right. Uh, this last one here, so we're at the ostium, we're a little off axis here. You can see the appendage isn't <coughs> fully open, but we see something here, and we're not quite sure where we are or what that is or if that is actually anything there. But you see something that's independently mobile, it's kind of hazy, it's not fully formed, it's sitting very close to the front. We actually biplane it, and the biplane, we kind of see that there might be something there, kind of not quite sure. It's not quite formed, and could it still be artifact? We're kind of hesitating here. We do a velocity. The velocity isn't that great. The Doppler isn't that great. We don't see there. That doesn't help us. So sometimes we say we can't tell, and we do a CT. Yes? Um, can you go back on the case here and the before? Did you do the 3D on that? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Not on that one. I 
I think I think if it depends on your 2D imaging and how good your 2D imaging and what your comfort level is looking at the 3D. I think here using biplane in the multi um, and sort of the biplane mode of 3D is actually probably more useful than anything else. And sometimes it's very important whether you have to be because the surgeon and the interventionalist have never thanked you for saying I think maybe or I'm 90% certain. They want that 100% guarantee, yes or no. So, um, so we try to just then give them a definitive answer or say you need to confirm with a CT. And that's sometimes what we've come down to. So that last case we did, we said it's very unusual. It's, uh, we see something there, but it would be weird for someone to be fully anticoagulated to still have something there. So then we said, do a CT uh, with contrast, five minutes. We can get an answer. They can still get their procedure. It's very easy to add on for our, for our, um, for our radiologists. So sometimes that's what we do. But in terms of actually getting a 3D volume, I have a case that I didn't put up. Um, but I think sometimes 3D helps you visualize the stuff around it and you can, if it's a clear ball and everything. Once again, it's nice, it's a pretty picture, but I'm not sure how it adds there. If you're already uncertain about it, I don't know necessarily sometimes that 3D will give you that actual little bit, especially the left atrial appendage. <coughs> yeah. All right. And I think that was my last case. And then, oh, I was going to end up with this. So we talked about how um, the anatomy of the appendages, you can see all these little pectinate there, but sometimes you don't know whether or not it's pectinate or not. So here we have two different views. You can see there's a lot of pectinate at the tip of the appendage. And some, if you cut through, that can give you the reassurance that you're actually clean in your device. So, and it confirms what your anatomy is and what you're looking at. All right. Very good. So they're multi-modulated? Yeah. Oh, so no, this one has mo this one has is probably a, um, a big windsock. But you can see that there's lots of, it's got very deep pectinate. It's a very large there. And I don't know if Omran, you used 3D um, in the past to look at uh, for some of your. This time? For, no, for, for if you want to figure out clot. You probably use biplay, but do you use? Clot or something that you were showing probably you will not see it in C D at all. Right. So, so it also that's also the other thing is whether or not you'd be able to see it depending on the resolution on it. But I find multiplane is probably the most useful. I don't know you necessarily if we go into three D for that. All right. Very good. So sort of summary um, basically that uh, um, T T T E E is what you actually need to look for thrombus. Um, and the findings include a mobile, independently mobile density within the appendage, uh, has to move independently of the walls, uh, definitive contrast should be something you should consider with your lab. Most, most clinical outpatient labs will have access to it. Worst case, you can call and ask to borrow a, a vial to actually go down and do it. Um, and, and sometimes they can come up and help you with that. And then pulse wave is sometimes something we do. And sometimes it's gathering all the evidence to feel comfortable with what you're going to say or not say. All right. And I'm going to actually acknowledge one of our sonographers for helping me with pulling these cases together. <laughs>